Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. In today's dry dock video, we're going to talk about how we picked the date for dry dock and what sort of external factors played into that decision. Here's a spoiler for you. Weather is one of them. So, uh, because I'm sure the wind is messing up the audio here, we're going to move the rest of this video inside. We will be moving the ship on Thursday, March 21st, around noon. We will be streaming it so you can watch online. Uh, you can absolutely come out and watch it in person from our pier or from a number of other places along the Delaware River. Or there will also be a special cruise boat following us along, and tickets for that will be available on our website as well. So check that link out too. First is dry dock availability. There's a ship in the dry dock now. It has to leave before we can go in. Not only does it have to leave, but the dry dock has to be reset up so that the blocking plan for that ship is switched over to the blocking plan for this ship. The ship that's in there now is likely one of the ships that they see pretty frequently and, and have blocks relatively uh, easy to go. They haven't seen an Iowa-class battleship there since probably the 80s, maybe earlier. Uh, so they do not have blocks ready to go. We've sent them the plans. They can get them switched over. But well, that's going to be a period of time between when the ship leaves and when they can do that. It also requires them to know when that ship is going to leave. And uh, just like with every dry dock project, you never know when it's going to begin. You also never know when it's going to end. They had a certain scope of work. Uh, they were prepared to do that within a certain time frame. And I am sure something has come up that has expanded that scope of work, something that they found in the yard and they have to wait for a part to show up or it just takes a period of time to do this thing and then paint it and then wait for that paint to dry to put on a new coat of paint so on and so forth. Uh, so it's kind of imprecise like that. We'll get back to the video in just a second, but first we're doing dry dock tours of the battleship. Starting on April 6th and running through at least the end of May on weekends, we will be taking groups of people into the dry dock to see Battleship New Jersey out of the water. There's a link in the description below if you're interested in participating. This is potentially a once in a lifetime opportunity to see a battleship, especially an Iowa class battleship, out of the water. So we know that that ship's out of there. We know that our blocking plan is going to be done within a period of time, a couple of days, a couple of weeks. I'm not quite sure how long it'll take them. Um, what's the next thing we need to know? The tides are really going to affect us. So our berth is relatively shallow. It's deep enough for the battleship, but it's not anything extra. So we want the highest tide possible. The tidal fluctuation on the Delaware River is about six feet from high tide to low tide. So uh, th th that's not a whole heck of a lot of wiggle room, but an extra six feet is going to make a world of difference in case there's any sort of obstructions between the pier and the shipping channel. Uh, so we want to leave at high tide. The high tide happens twice a day, uh, usually about 12 hours apart. Because this is a dead ship tow, the Coast Guard mandates that it happens during daylight. So we need a high tide in daylight to tow the ship. And uh, the entire thing has to take place in, in daylight. So we also need there to be daylight when the ship arrives at her berth at the end of the tow. So if it's uh, something like the high tide is 6 p.m., that's no good because it takes us a couple hours to get there. We're not uh, arriving in daylight. So high tide has to be during a certain parameter. The tides are based on a lunar day, which is 24 hours and about 50 minutes, 24 hours and 50 minutes. So uh, essentially every day, the tide period shifts almost a full hour. So for example, high tide on February 14th uh, is going to be at 5.15 p.m. And then the next one in the morning will be at uh, 5.42 a.m. on the 15th. Uh, so neither of those times work. We would have to wait a couple of days to get a good tide window. There are also periods of time uh, when the tide fluctuates more than that six feet. 
some ships like the SS United States need to transit under or over certain obstructions uh, at specific times of year, that's not going to be an issue for us. Uh, realistically, that six foot tidal flow is going to be enough for us. We can go whenever, as long as the tides are at an appropriate time. So once the dry dock gets their last ship out of there, gets it reblocked for us, they give us, uh, we can go in on this date. Well, then we need to sort out which day we can actually make that move. It's worth pointing out, uh, we are not going to make the move all in one day. The ship has to go from uh, her current berth to a lay berth, which is going to be deeper than her current berth so that we can ballast the ship. And then from there, we will go into the dry dock. And it's going to be I don't know, three, four, five days of ballasting to get all the water that we need into the tanks. We can't just open the tanks like normal. We can't use the ship's original pumps. None of those have been used since 1990. So we have to bring in a company to pump water into the ship. Uh, in fact, we hired the same exact company that the battleship Texas used as their salvage firm in case they started to take on water during their tow. We figured they have some pretty big pumps that could uh, pump water out of the ship, just put those pumps in the river and pump it into the ship instead. So that's our plan with that. Another thing that could impact the date is the weather at the time of the date. If, uh, say, there's really bad fog, for example, that impacts the visibility, the Coast Guard won't let us make a dead ship tow. If there are uh, high winds, I think it's 25 knots or more, they won't let us make a dead ship tow. Uh, if there's another ship in the channel that uh, is going to cause some sort of issues, they might not let us make the dead ship tow. So weather and other outside factors may also affect uh, whether or not the battleship is able to go on the date that we select. And if we miss the original date, well, then because of that tidal shift, who knows? We, we should have a couple of day window where the, the tide is hitting the right point in the morning, but can't guarantee. So as you can see, there are a lot of things that we have to work on, and they're not necessarily things that will affect all museum ships, but, but a ship that's as deep drafted as us um, are affected by this. And thankfully, we're not as big as some ships that face even more severe limitations when they move. What's a question you'd like to see answered on a future dry dock video? Let us know in the comments section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to donate to support the museum and our dry docking effort. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about the museum and our channel. Thanks for watching.